Okay, hi everyone and welcome. My name is Makia Algamdi. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm an admissions and recruitment specialist here at the Brown School. As well as hearing from our student experiences. Um, I'm also looking forward to just getting uh, this exciting discussion started. Um, we've already received a lot of questions uh, beforehand, uh, but if questions come up along the way, definitely feel free to use the Q&A feature um, here on Zoom um, and just you know, submit your questions throughout the session and we'll try our best to get to them at the end of today's PowerPoint presentation or uh, session. And so, as we get started with panelist introductions, uh, definitely continue to introduce yourselves in the chat box. Give us your name, uh, pronouns, and hometown. Um, and now I'm going to ask each of our wonderful panelists to please introduce themselves. Uh, again, give us your name, pronouns, hometown, um, program, concentration, and if you have a specialization, uh, let us know. Um, and we're going to get started with Felicity. Um. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Felicity. I go by she, they pronouns. Uh, my hometown is Shanghai, China. My concentration is mental health and I'm a first year MSW student. Uh, I'm currently working at the, let me recall the name of my practicum. It's uh, at the School of Medicine, the part of Department of Psychiatry. And I'm working at the Center for Weight and Wellness Management. Um, as a researcher, but also a co-facilitator for their um, interventions. Thanks, Makia. Now, Lauren, would you please introduce yourself? Yeah, hi, everybody. Thanks for coming. I'm Lauren. Um, my pronouns are she, her. I am from El Paso, Texas, and I'm in the MSW program. I'm a first year student, and my concentration's in mental health. Right now, my practicum site is on for um, St. Louis, and I work with their um, drama therapy club as a co-facilitator. Thank you. And now, uh, Keisha. Hi, everyone. I'm Katie. I use she/her pronouns. I am originally from the San Francisco area, um, but I've lived in St. Louis for almost five years now, and. Um, I'm in the I'm in my second year of the master's in public health program. My concentration is in health policy analysis, um, and I did my practicum last summer um, with the CDC's Center for um, a very long name, State, Tribal, Local, and Territorial Support, and then within that, in the public health law program. And now for Ali. Hi, y'all. My name is Ali. I'm a third year. Um, MSW MPH dual degree student. I use she, they pronouns. Um, my concentration for the MSW program is individualized. I study gender, migration, and humanitarian response. Um, and then I'm a generalist for the MPH program. Um, I've done my foundation practicum at the International Institute of St. Louis. Um, and then my concentration practicum, I affiliated an organization. So that was Doctors Without Borders. And I'm currently looking for my final dual degree practicum for this summer. Thanks, Alex. Uh, Jewel, would you like to introduce yourself? Okay, sure. Hello, everyone. My name is Jewel Stafford. I use she, her pronouns. My hometown is New York. I work with all three programs, concentrations, and specializations. I am the assistant dean of field education, a teaching professor for the master's of social work program, and the director of the racial equity fellowship program. And I will turn it back over to you. Thanks, Jill. All right. Uh, well, thank you all uh, panelists for being here. Um, and before we start our discussion, I'm gonna present a brief overview about the practicum at the Brown School. So to begin, the practicum uh, at the Brown School is really unique because it's self-guided. You get to choose your own practicum site, um, and this is supported by recruitment events and by the Office of Field Education. It's also very supportive. Um, you'll be supported by meeting with field education faculty. Um, they'll help you identify your goals. They'll also navigate any difficult or new experiences, um, and they'll help you choose a site. And then. It, and then it's also very extensive. We have over 400 plus uh, sites located 
locally, nationally, and internationally. Um, and there's also opportunities to affiliate new sites. Um, and so there's some, uh, there's lots to choose from. And so now let's move on to uh, the practicum requirements per program. And so for our MSW students, uh, they are required to complete two practicums, uh, a 360 hour foundation practicum, usually completed uh, in their first spring and or summer, summertime, and it does have to be in the St. Louis area. Um, and then follow, it's followed by a, six, a 600 hour concentration practicum. And this is usually completed in their second year. Um, and this is related to your MSW concentration. And then for our advanced standing MSW students, um, they have to complete a 600 hour concentration practicum, um, usually completed in their first spring or summertime. Um, some students are able to uh, start their practicum in the fall semester, specifically for our mental health um, and school social work students. Um, and then for our MPH students, they have one practicum that they have to complete. Um, and it, it'll be a 360 hour practicum. And it's usually completed between the first and second year. And then for our MSW MPH dual degree students, um, they have a foundation practicum uh, that'll be six, uh, 360 hours. And then they'll have their dual practicum, which will also be 360 hours. Um, and then we'll have, they'll have their concentration practicum, which will be about 240 hours. And then last but not least, we have our MSP students. Um, they are required to complete three credit or 360 hours of an internship after they've completed all their coursework. And so that kind of sums up all of our uh, practicum requirements per program. Um, and now we are going to uh, start our discussion. I want to welcome our Assistant Dean of Field Education, Joel, to begin the discussion. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Fantastic. Thank you so much for that. I'm going to open it up. And to start, I know this past year has been a year where field education has had to pivot in the light of COVID-19 and the pandemic. Can you talk about how that has affected field education at the Brown School or specifically your own practicum placement? I'm gonna open it up to any of you. We can go in the same order of our introductions to make it easier. Yeah, that'll work. Okay, I can go. Um, as a carless person, I... <laughs> I actually really appreciate, um, I, I'm not appreciating the COVID, but I'm appreciating how COVID has opened up the possibility of um, securing our practicum remotely. So I had, um, it's very easy to just uh, correspond with through our practicum sites via email. And um, I think most of the interviews or all of the interviews I did were online over Zoom. So it's quite convenient. Um, so I, I do like that. And right now my um, practicum site is completely remote, which is easier to fit into my existing schedule. We don't have to like commute and um, I really like it. Yeah, to second Thanks. what Felicity said, the, um, the process of securing a practicum was very, um, it was nice that it was all remote. Uh, we didn't have to like travel for interviews or anything like that. Um, specifically in how it changed the role of my practicum, my practicum is in person and we work with um, different populations to do um, drama therapy with, like it's a group therapy program. And what has changed is the other part of our program, which is um, we train people to put on a live production and with COVID and everything, um, that changed the way that drama worked, I guess, um, as far as like how, how do you put on a production? How do you have an audience virtually? And so that has changed some of my responsibilities and we are now training um, some of the students that come to work with us how to do live streaming, um, different, different digital media, productions and um, so it's been interesting to see how we pivot um, as an organization 
to continue providing different services to the community. Yeah, my practical experience was last summer, summer 2021. So it was um, completely virtual, um, which I don't think it nor I think normally that the specific internship I did was um, is normally in person. Um, but kind of like the folks so far have said, like there definitely are some pros and cons to that, I think like it made it, it's in Atlanta, which um, might not have necessarily been accessible for me um, had it not been online. But then at the same time, of course, I would have loved to have kind of uh, maybe had a little bit of a closer interaction in person with my supervisor and um, the other folks working in the office. So um, on, on the whole, though, I still had a really, I think, fulfilling experience, even though it was online, just folks have gotten really creative and clever with the ways that they um, use virtual, um, at, you know, alleys to, to do work nowadays. So um, I still had a really good experience, but um, hopefully someday I can meet my boss or something like that. <laughs> So my experience has been interesting in that I was actually in my first foundation practicum when COVID started. Um, so I, I started out that practicum working in person. I was doing case management at the International Institute, working with families, um, helping them, you know, get registered for benefits and uh, navigate like landlord issues and stuff like that. Um, so when that switched and when COVID hit, it switched to remote. Um, and so that was kind of difficult because I, it was hard to, you know, continue building those relationships. And in fact, like a lot of my projects changed to be like supporting literature reviews and doing a little bit more of the background work. Um, so in that way, I felt like I wasn't really doing what I had intentionally gone into. But then on the positive side, um, kind of what some of the other panelists have said, the COVID situation opened up uh, opportunities for remote practica that I hadn't considered previously. So for me, that was affiliating an organization I had previously worked at and developing like a deeper relationship with them and kind of going into a new role in that organization. I had done human research before. So um, with COVID, I was able to do more like mental health support for humanitarian workers. And um, I was able to develop like a virtual support group with people who were in different places in the world using expressive arts. Um, so yeah, kind of like my other panelists, it you know there were some challenges, but it also presented some new exciting opportunities that I don't think I would have had otherwise. Thank you, Allie. You actually helped us to segue into the most exciting and a little daunting part of uh, the practicum site, which is the search. So for many prospective students, Selecting your own practicum site at the beginning can seem a little exciting and a, a little daunting. Can each of you talk a little bit about your search, the resources that were available to you, how you found your site, maybe places that you interviewed, um, and how did you end up where you currently were? So I know uh, some of you said you finished your practicum. So how did you end up deciding where you ended up? We'll start with you, Felicity. <laughs> okay. Um, I well, I it's um, it didn't start with a very good story because I was a master procrastinator and I was also inundated by the extensive opportunities that Brown School has to offer. There's just so many sites, and I didn't know where to start. And I just look at how other students were constantly like emailing their practicum sites while I was doing nothing, which fed into my anxiety. But eventually um, I reached out to our field um, office or field education office, which was a great opportunity or like a starting point for me. I talked to one of our field advisors and um, I told her I needed some help. I've been um, delaying my process for such a long time and she said you you're fine like we still have time and she said I can be your accountability buddy um, and we arranged another meeting I think a week after and we set a lot of like very reachable goals like I write emails to five practicum sites during the week and I uh, tailor and finalize my resume so I, I was able to because of her I was able to accomplish all that and I think that just really set off like a good start and all the rest just became very smooth 
So I had, uh, I think around seven interviews. Um, that they were all very interesting and fun, but eventually I decided on working with the um, psych, psych, psychiatry department because they offer like various uh, kind of task that I'm interested in. I'm interested in uh, the research par part of mental health. So I help them with um, literature reviews. I also help them with data analysis, um, moving data to platforms such as Qualtrics. But um, they also have a weight management center which work with uh, families with child children who are obese. So I was able to do direct practice uh, working with clinical social workers to facilitate groups. And the whole team is very accessible. We were able to like um, arrange meetings um, every once in a while. So even it's completely remote, I feel like I've built a really good relationship with um, the team members and my supervisors. And that's it. <laughs> so um, I think Felicity brings up some great points. Like it, it's easy to feel overwhelmed and to feel like everybody else is doing all these cool things or reaching out to so many practica sites. Um, I know for me, like my roommate, like the first like couple of weeks that we first started, um, like practicum sites were looking for students. My roommate had like five different interviews set up and I was like still looking for one to apply to. And so that was like a little daunting. Um, but the F Office of Field Education had, um, what is it called, like a fair an online fair that we could go to and like we could speak or the organizations would kind of present on like what opportunities they had and we could speak with them or reach out to them and that was really helpful I found my practicum on using the Brown School resources and that was the only one I actually applied to <laughs> and and then I was accepted so then I didn't apply to any more I mean I was thinking about applying to more if um, but I was accepted so I decided that that was what I really wanted and it worked out like I, like Felicity said, I didn't need to worry. <laughs> it was going to work out. Yeah, I think I started looking. Um, so for the MPH, I think it was mentioned that you, um, um, basically everybody does their MPH practicum in the summer between your first and second years. So I started looking for practicum opportunities probably once we got back from winter break. Um, a lot of folks though, it, it like sometimes that process extends into like March or April. So there's definitely no one like right timeline. Um, I kind of knew for myself that I wanted to work in like kind of a structure, like a very structured environment, like hopefully something like a structured internship. I just knew that something a little bit more self-directed um, was, maybe not going to be for me. I just probably wouldn't have been as productive. I, I like kind of structure. Um, so I started applying to like actual like structured internship kind of programs. Um, yeah, probably like January, February into like March. Um, and then I think I kind of had solidified mine in March, mid-March, something like that. And I actually ended up affiliating um, an organization as well. Um, so I probably applied to about 10 um, structured internships. I also kind of reached out to other folks um, via email, that type of thing, or if they were working in organizations I was interested in. Um, I kind of just took a um, anything that sounded interesting to me, I was like, might as well go for it kind of approach. And that led to, you know, even if it wasn't the, you know, practicum set I ended up being with, it led to really cool connections with um, folks that you can still keep in touch with down the line. Um, so yeah, I probably applied to about 10. I interviewed at two and then I ended up getting um, one offer and it, and it worked out well. So um, they're definitely, like I said, is like I think no one right way to do it, no one right timeline. But um, I, I saw like the first question in the chat, which I'm sure we'll come back to is about folks not getting placements. And, and I think that doesn't, I don't, I've never heard of that happening because I know it really does work out for folks um, in, in different ways, one way or another, even if it looks really different for everybody. Buddy. Um, and yeah, so I had two interviews. Those were both um, kind of like Felicity said, they were both pretty fun. They were, you know, good experiences to, to talk about what I was interested in and the works that these organizations 
um, organizations were doing. So those were really just like good learning experiences, not too, too daunting. Um, and then I started mine in May and was done by August. So it's pretty expedited in the um, MPH program, but overall the search process um, wasn't too, too bad. Yeah, so the way for me, my foundation practicum, um, I started looking for that the fall of my MSW first year. Um, and my process was also kind of not linear. I maybe, you know, applied to seven to 10 places, went to four or five interviews. Um, my top choice was the International Institute. And I actually was not accepted for their practicum after interviewing with them. And then a few weeks later, they reached out to me and they said, hi, the person we chose actually ended up getting their first choice somewhere else. So we would love to have you come on and be our practicum student if you're still available. And so I then ended up accepting because they were my first choice. But it definitely, um, you know, it took a little bit for everyone to kind of find their place. And there was a little bit of that movement around um, that it wasn't actually all worked out until maybe late November. Um, before I started the spring semester. And then for my second concentration practicum, um, that was the one where I affiliated an organization, which I know was just kind of touched upon. So that process was, you know, I reached out to someone I had a relationship with at an organization I previously worked at. Um, they didn't have any sort of like practicum or intern role already created. I said, you know, would you be willing to Kind of create this role and and mentor me and um, go through the affiliation process and they agreed um, and actually it is now set up as a future role that is paid for future students so it was you know really cool to go through that process um, and affiliate them for not just me but for the future um, and yeah and that that was just kind of like a lot of working with the organization one-on-one um, -on -one, getting them connected with the field education they had to go through um, some documents and some training um, to get affiliated. And then now I'm currently looking for my dual degree practicum, which will be this summer, 360 hours. So about two weeks ago, I went to our virtual practicum fair um, that Lauren had mentioned where there were different organizations there um, that kind of talk about the opportunities they have available and you can hop around to different rooms and ask different questions. Um, and then I interviewed at a place last week, which is my top choice. So if I I'm waiting to hear back and if I get it, then I'll be done. If not, then I will keep sending out those applications to other uh, organizations that I talked with. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. Fantastic. Thank you uh, both for talking about the affiliation process. Um, so many of the sites that we have are because we have amazing students like Ali and Kishi that say, I have a specific site in mind that I want to work for. And if it's not available, how can we get that uh, available? And so we have a, a site called Simplicity. We have a mixed set of emotions around Simplicity as a database, but we, we use Simplicity because it has 400 or more of our sites. And what we've also done in the pandemic is created a virtual bulletin board. And so we try to update that and send that out to students on a regular basis as well. Um, but in light of some of just the technical resources, um, can you all speak to the field, the foundations of field course or what it's like working with the Office of Field Education and what the process is like interacting with the office to get your practicum? Felicity, you're up first. <laughs> Can we switch up the, the You know, we'll switch up next time, yes. Oh, we can switch up now. Lauren, um, do you want to go first? Sure thing. Um, okay. So <laughs> I, I had a good experience working with the field office. Um, I hesitate because I, I only applied to one practicum and I didn't have a lot of um, questions. I think you guys did a really great job of um, making like the spreadsheet of different practica sites that you guys are affiliated with available and um, it made it easy to for me to find what I was looking for. Um, something I was thinking about is um, my, my roommate's experience because she would talk to me a lot about like her experience in finding, she's an MSW also, um, finding practica because she had applied to so many and then when she was accepted, she was like, I don't know what to pick and she, she really struggled with that. Um, and I know she had set up an appointment with her field um, office, I mean, her 
field education instructor and um, they like walked through different things and kind of like talked about her goals and really did a great job of helping her find the right fit for a practica site. Um, so I, I know it's been a very positive experience for many people. We can go with Kishi next. We'll Sorry, I was just following <laughs> <laughs> Um Yeah, I had a good, I had a really good um, time working with the Office of Field Education as well. Um, I met, I believe it's been a while, <laughs> with um, Ragini, who is the wonderful um, kind of like MPH focused um, Office of Field, Field Education member um, pretty early in my practicum site, kind of asked her about um, the fact that I was mostly looking at structured internships, some of which were not affiliated. And so I asked her about the affiliation um, process and what that might, might look like. And she was um, wonderful and super supportive and um, uh, helped me in, in, in any way she could. And then once I had kind of um, solidified my practical choice um, was very responsive throughout the whole um, affiliation process, which I really appreciated because it, it the, the like, like Jewel mentioned, I think the concept of affiliating might seem kind of big, but it's really smooth and straightforward, honestly, once you kind of um, um, start getting into the details of it. So yeah, I had a great experience with the Office of Field Education. And then throughout my, my summer um, as well, they were very helpful. I would kind of email her questions, uh, not not often, <laughs> and she would always respond and was very helpful and then was great during my um, field visit as well, which of course was via Zoom. But um, yeah, they're very helpful here for you whenever you need. I can go next. Um, so I will talk about the Foundations of Field course, which is like the seminar um, that you take in tandem with like your first practicum. Um, so I had an amazing uh, field education advisor who taught my seminar, which was Elizabeth Huge. And uh, like, I think it was maybe the first or second week of the semester in the spring. And one of my classmates and friends was in a practicum that she was really excited about. Um, and a, a few weeks in her supervisor got fired from the organization. Um, and so, I saw how like Elizabeth really supported her and, and, you know, was like, you know, we know you need to have an LCSW supervisor and that was the only person at that organization and they're no longer there. Like, how can we pivot and either find another role for you or find another organization and placement for you? Um, and so that was just, you know, really cool to witness them supporting in real time and, and helping the student navigate that practicum issue. Um, and then I will say that once COVID happened and we were suddenly virtual for our foundation, the field course, Elizabeth completely pivoted and spent our like weekly check-in um, to really like see how we were doing personally, where our basic needs being met, um, how are we actually like doing in our practicum as that switched to being remote. Um, and she just, I just really admired the way she was able to pivot from kind of like what the syllabus required out of the Foundations of Field course to really just make sure that we were all being supported, we all had the resources we needed, and that we were okay with how our practicum had changed. Um, so that's just one example of how field education has supported students and myself. Yeah, like everybody have shared, I have really good experience with the field office. Um, I, I really appreciate the the Excel spreadsheet that was like updated very regularly. And I think it's just something that was always in our radar. Um, so we can think about, I don't know, think about uh, finding practicum and looking for it. And even I think yesterday, the field um, education sent out an email about um, the concentration practicum opportunities. And I'm starting to apply for one of them. And I think that's really good how the field education office has been, I think, one of the most proactive offices out of the um, Brown departments, really trying to get the resources to the students. And um, right now, in terms of the, like Ali has said, the, the course, the seminar that goes with the practicum that we're in, I really like my instructor as well. Um, she's very responsive and uh, I think when we were crafting, we have to do this thing called ELA, which is our study or learning plan for the practicum. And she's been very helpful with um, helping me specifying and making the goals more tangible. And I think this process has definitely made me think about like what I want to get 
get out of my practicum experience instead of just like jumping into it. And it's very helpful. Fantastic. Thank you so much. It's so good to hear that we're being a little bit more proactive um, this year as well, because I think um, the pandemic requires more communication sometimes than less. Um, and so for the students who some of you might be beginning the one of your practicum experiences and others may have completed one or two of practica already, wherever you're at, my two part question is, can you share some of the primary ways you spend your time at practicum or major projects that you've worked on? So that's number one. And two, what are the primary skills you found yourself enhancing or strengthening um, to work on at your practicum? So I'm gonna start with Ali first <laughs> to switch things up a little bit. Yeah, so I can talk about a few of the tasks and projects I worked on in my concentration pr practicum, which was remote. Um, so first of all, um, I often had like one-on-one -on -one sessions with humanitarian staff who worked at my organization to, um, you know, create a wellness, a mental wellness plan for before they left for their work assignments, um, like a stress management plan. And then when they returned from their assignments, kind of like assess um, their psychosocial well-being and shared some, you know, resources or referred them if they needed more support outside of our organization. Um, I also was able to develop a expressive arts group workshop um, for the humanitarian workers to kind of like talk through some of their stressors or challenges, like through using expressive arts. Um, and that was something that was really exciting to me because I was in an expressive arts skill lab at the Brown School at that same time, which is kind of what inspired me to use that in the group facilitation. Um, so I was able to kind of just like further develop that skill and also um, my group facilitation skills at the same time. Um, so really appreciated those. And then the kind of semester long project that I worked on, or actually in this case, it was two semesters, was that I designed and conducted a mixed methods evaluation of the psychosocial services at the practicum. So I sent out a survey to like 400 field workers um, asking about um, their access to psychosocial services, what challenges they had finding mental health providers, um, and just kind of, you know, I also did interviews to kind of um, tease out some of those nuances and their experiences. And then I drafted a full report um, on the evaluation uh, and presented it to the department that I was working with. So kind of these like, daily tasks such as those one-on-one -on -one sessions, but then also like the semester long project evaluation um, really filled up my time in that practice. Fantastic. Lauren, we'll go to you next. Okay, so um, I just started my practicum maybe four weeks ago and a lot of the first couple weeks are training, um, but I, I can say that I'm really excited I can tell you a little bit about the goals that we have for um, my practicum this, uh, this semester. So I will be working, there's like two main roles that I'm going to be working as. Um, it's, I'll be helping to facilitate our drama therapy program. Right now we're working with the Jean Slay Girls and Boys Club in Soulard and we are helping them, uh, we're, we're working with fourth graders right now. And it's about a group of 10 girls that we have who are, um, we like, we're teaching them emotional uh, intelligence skills and how to use drama to, to work through different things. Um, and so I'm helping to, right now I'm mainly observing, but eventually I'll be helping to co-facilitate that. And then the second part is um, working with high school seniors and we will be working with them to um, teach them different skills. Right now we're doing like the live, the live um, media production and um, teaching them kind of how to use those skills uh, moving forward. And so my role in that is I'm a creative mentor, so I'll help them uh, come up with like a project and then we'll work together to, to accomplish that. Fantastic. Keisha, you're up next. 
Yeah, so I was um, within the CDC's public health law program. So most of what they do is um, basically looking at um, how different health, not even actually health, but just in general laws and policies affect different health outcomes in different communities. Um, so every kind of, it's a, like I mentioned, a structured internship program. Some of the interns are MS, uh, MSW students, there's some MPH students, and then um, some law students as well. So you kind of got matched up with um, a supervisor who maybe had a similar educational background to you. So I had um, an, an MPH supervisor um, who was great. And one of the main things that she worked on that I helped support was um, the public health law program basically runs this, um, they call it a legal epidemiology, which is a big term for essentially what I just said. It basically means looking at how laws affect health outcomes, but they call it their uh, legal epidemiology learning cohort. And it's a uh, year long program for um, either state, local, tribal, territorial um, health departments um, to work pretty closely with the, the public health law program to look at um, law, um, certain laws in their areas and how they're impacting health outcomes. So um, it depends on the year. There's a, any number of um, participants kind of up to five or six. This year, there are only two because of COVID. One was um, in California, one was in Texas. So I got to kind of help her um, with that uh, program and, and hop on lots of different meetings with folks from these uh, these areas and, and learn about what they were doing and working on um, and their big projects because it's a year long um, project. So I was only there for, for a couple months of it, but it was a very cool experience. I got to kind of hone my technical assistant skills, which is not something I had ever really um, done before, but is, is pretty common obviously in, in the field. So th those are really helpful. And I think just in general, getting to work with, obviously the CDC is like a federal entity. Um, I was kind of working with more local um, folks through that program. So getting kind of exposure to different levels of, um, of the health world, um, the government, as well was was really helpful and something I did not have any experience with just kind of coming in from an academic background and, and academic research. Um, that was um, definitely something I learned a lot about and then obviously being at the CDC in 2021 I also of course got to learn a little bit more about COVID um, and I did a uh, kind of a research project where we were like an issue brief and a literature review on on the distribution of the vaccine uh, to different racial and ethnic minorities and how kind of the vaccine distribution process was equitable or not, um, which was also quite interesting, quite relevant. Um, and then the great thing about kind of being a, a CDC employee, um, also in, in 2021, of course, but anytime you get to kind of hop onto these meetings or working groups um, for uh, anyone in the massive, massive organization that it is. So I got to kind of go to um, all hands meetings where Dr. Wilensky, who's the director was speaking, or I got to kind of go to young professional groups if I wanted to, um, even though I was only there for a couple months, there was like a French class that I went to a couple times. It was just really nice to kind of be able to um, take any opportunities um, that you wanted. And, and make it your own. And yes, she mentioned that I do have, have to hop off because I'm at home and I have to go to class on campus at one o'clock, but um, I can, if it works, I can um, put my email in the chat. And if anyone wants to reach out, I'm more than happy to chat as well. Thank you so much for that thorough description. You, I'm sure you got lots of people excited once you said Dr. Walensky. <laughs> awesome, thank you so much. Uh, and thank you for joining us as well and leaving your email in um, the chat for our admitted for our virtual program and Felicity what was your process like and what were your skills and projects um, thank you Keishi and bye <laughs> I so I uh, similar to Lauren I only started my practicum uh, in four weeks ago and the first week I was just uh, attending lab meetings and familiarizing myself with the team members. We had a very diverse group of people um, because our lab has like two main areas of focus. One is childhood obesity intervention and prevention. And the other side is eating disorder prevention treatment, which is quite interesting. Uh, so they're registered dietitians, um, professors at the psychiatric department of Washington Medical School uh, and some LCSWs and LMSWs and practicum students. So it's a very, oh, and psychologists. So it's a very diverse team. And um, 
and I received trainings um, in family-based therapy or family-based treatment for children with obesity issues. Um, and that's a project that we are gonna start very soon in early March, I believe. Um, it's gonna be completely remote and we're working with families from lower, in lower income families to help them um, participate in the FBT uh, treatment. And it's a CDC funded project and they essentially wanna see if such program can be um, effective for, for families and because it's the first time that FBT have been applied in a group setting um, for families. So that's a project that I'm really excited about. And I'm also communicating with the coaches, the FBD coaches at um, Freeman Children's Hospital very frequently. And we talk about how I can help her co-facilitate the upcoming treatment, um, the group treatments. And the other, on the other side, which is the eating disorder side of things, I'm helping with um, the project manager, moving a lot of the established treatment plans to online platforms. Um, so I'm doing a lot of like easy programming. <laughs> it's not very hard, but I think it's very interesting like switching things up uh, from doing direct practice to like some sort of coding and um, data analysis. I find it actually quite, um, how does, what's, what's the word? It's, it's just fun, like <laughs> switching things up. Uh, what else? Let me see. I wrote down some notes. Oh, and I think in the future, another project is uh, to help tailor our existing um, eating disorder interventions and make them more inclusive uh, for gender, sexuality, and ability, racial minority folks. Um, so that, because I think previously, most of the eating disorder treatments have been very like female focused and we want them to be more inclusive and that's something I think I'm gonna help with in the future and very exciting. Fantastic, thank you. I think we have time for one more of our questions and then we can open it up. Um, and so this one's really very easy. What advice would you have for prospective students? So you've talked about the process, you talked about your skills, um, but given everything that you know now, given where you were then, what information do you wish you knew then? Um, and what advice would you give to students now? So I'm gonna start again. Um, Lauren, do you mind if I start with you? Sure, I don't mind at all. Great. Um, my advice would definitely be um, to not worry too much. I, I placed a lot of worry in like, I need to find it so soon, like there's not gonna be any spots left and that's not at all the case. There are so like so many organizations and um, placement sites that need help. There's, I, I don't think, um, if, if I would give advice to someone, it would be to not worry about um, finding a practicum. And then it would also be to take your time to find the right practicum that works and fits with your goals and your interests. Because um, I'm glad that I didn't, I mean, I was worried, but I also didn't rush to like set up all these interviews because I took I, I took the time that I, I wanted to find a practicum that really fit with my career goals and my interests. Um, and so I'm really, really happy with how everything turned out. And so that's what I would suggest for others to do too. Excellent. And Allie, I will pass it to you. Yeah, so now looking at for my third practicum, um, I feel like um, my advice would be to like find an organization system that works for you and how to approach it. Um, so I think my first semester, I was just kind of all over the place, you know, attending um, attending the practicum fair and just kind of like emailing left and right. And I wasn't really kind of like tracking it in a way that made, made sense. And so now I have like a spreadsheet that has, you know, the practicum site, um, the contact info, um, you know, if it's paid or not, if I need a car or not. 
just kind of, you know, I pull from like the spreadsheets that the uh, field education provides, but like with the sites that I'm interested in. And then I also have, um, like I wrote a thing about what I really want out of my practice. I'm like, what skills am I really interested in developing further that I've learned in classes or maybe that I haven't had a chance to, to do in classes that I want to do more of. Um, and I, now every time when I am applying for a practicum, I'm kind of consulting that list. Like, is this checking off some of my skill boxes or does it have the opportunity and flexibility to, to develop projects I'm interested in? Um, like, how does this fit into kind of my story and my path um, throughout the Brown School and what skills can I develop further or draw upon um, that I've learned or that I want to learn? So I guess my advice <laughs> in short would be to like have an organization system that works for you to really track it all and then to um, have like, a, you know, an outline of what you're looking for, what you want, what kind of skills you want to gain and just make sure those are always kind of uh, reflecting one another. Yeah, um, I I would just I think I'm just gonna echo what uh, Laura and Ali have just shared. Versus, don't worry too much. I think when when we were first looking for the practicum, we were in this like scarcity mindset. But the reality is, there's so many organizations that need help and need assistance. And I think we kind of have to like shift our mindset from oh, with like we need all of them to like, oh, actually there's so many places that need us and need our help. And I think the other thing that Ali just mentioned is um, the practicum sites. We're not, it's not our like, it, it's not our, oh, it's still work, but we're also students. So I think one thing to keep in mind is what you wanna learn or like what's the tool that you wanna get out of, you wanna put into your toolbox by um, joining this practicum site. Um, and I think that's going to be very useful instead of just thinking about, oh, what skills do I have now? Uh, can I be a very good addition to the practicum? And switch that, that mindset to what do they have to offer? Um, can they offer me the tool that I want to acquire to further my profession? Fantastic. Uh, that segues me into just saying that so many of our field instructors, the supervisors that are at the agencies are our alum. And so not only do they want to give back to the profession, they want to give back to the Brown School. And so they are really invested in making sure that Brown School students specifically get certain experiences because of their experience at the Brown School. And so what you'll find on your interviews is that sometimes you're speaking to someone who is, you know, who took classes that you're taking and that had the same professors that you're taking, um, who probably know some of the same students that are in our um, community. And so we also work together really well as a community. As you can tell, we're working with admissions, but we also work with career services and they help to review your resume and they also help you to practice your interviews so they have mock interviews for you as well. So there are a lot of supports here to help you with the process. Um, and so, Makita, should we move to the questions in the chat? Yeah. We I have an awful sense of timing. <laughs> yeah, so I answered a few, but there is one about advanced standing MSW students. When do they start searching? Can they start searching in the fall or can they start searching the summer before they enroll in the fall? Certainly. So we do have special um, instances with some advanced standing students if they want to be in a school, like if they want to do um, a children, youth, and family concentration, or if they want to be in a school or specifically in a hospital, we will work with admissions to start that process with you. But we also have the Bridge to Brown course, which helps to integrate you into the school first. So you understand the culture and the climate and the resources that are available to you. Um, and so most of our advanced standing students have been asked to start thinking about practicum in the spring as well, just because we want you to get used to finding your way through life, right? Your, where are your, where's food? Where do you do your laundry? You know, just really acclimating yourself to what it means to be a student first. And then that has been really helpful in your first set of 
your first semester classes, helping you to think through what type of experiences you want to have. So sometimes you think you know, but when you get to the school, that can shift based on the classes, based on the um, sometimes the guest speakers we have in our classes, sometimes the people you meet in the neighborhood um, that can shift. And so we want to give you the opportunity to pivot and make a well-informed choice. So we like to start everyone at spring. We just got a bunch of questions and the Q&A <laughs> feature. So uh, one of them is, what are some examples of international placements? Certainly. Um, we've had a challenging time, obviously, because of the, the global pandemic, but our global program office works with a lot of our global um, programs. So we've had um, people work with um, one of our professors in Haiti. Um, she has a specific program that she works with, Lindsay Stark. She also does a lot of gender-based violence looking in Zimbabwe, Brazil, and I think Mozambique, um, but someone correct me if I am wrong. I think those are um, some of the areas. And um, we've also started a relationship with UNICEF and we've had some people work at the United Nations. Um, but we have a list of placements where students go to and you can find that on the Global Programs Office each year it changes. And so we want to make sure that you look at that list specifically. Um, for example, last year, we had someone who was working virtually with a professor in Afghanistan and we had to pivot because there were clearly external situate circumstances that prohibited him from continuing his practicum. But what we can say is we start the process very early. We work with our contacts in abroad um, and Tammy Orahutz and Zizi from the Global Program Office, they are there to work with you from the minute you say that you want to be a Brown School student. They work with you on that runway to start thinking through um, possible sites. Um, our next question is, do you have the option to change practicum site in case the one you chose isn't exactly what you expected? Now I can answer that question. Do any of you all want to answer that question? Okay, so yeah, we believe in choice. <laughs> um, we, uh, one of our values as a school of social work is self-determination. It's our core value in the code of ethics. And so what we'll do is if for some reason you hit the stage of disillusionment where what you thought you wanted to do isn't meeting the expectations of what you're actually doing, we come in to work with you and your field instructor to figure out how to um, renegotiate the terms of your learning contract. If all else fails, what we want to make sure primarily is that you're getting credit for your learning experience. So what we may do is um, work with you all until you get to a certain credit spot in your practicum, let's say one credit or two credit. So you get credit for the learning experience and then we will work with you to find another one. Um, but again, we, we make sure that we're working with you and the field instructor to make sure we manage some of those challenging um, experiences. Okay. Um, so we, can, we have time to answer one more question. Um, and so the next one is a friend of mine who is an alum of the Brown School suggested that I choose a first practicum that doesn't necessarily align with my expected concentration. Is that sound advice in your opinion? I'm going to go for it depends on what type of person you are. Um, so if you're the type of person who likes to learn new things and likes challenges, yes. If you're the type of person like Kishi who said, I wanted something very structured, then no, right? But we'll work with you to identify what your goals are, what skills you want to obtain. Um, your foundation, your first foundation practicum is really to get a breadth, a foundational, really overview of what the field is. So that when you get to your concentration, you can begin to specialize and be more specific and have more depth. So you can say, of all the things that I've learned, I wanna do this. 
well, or I want to continue to do this particular thing and nothing else. And that's what your foundation can be used for. So if you hit some challenging spots, great, but we don't want the whole thing to feel like a challenge. <laughs> we want you to enjoy your process. Anything else you want to add, Lauren or Allie, to that? Okay, um, I would add, I for me, it was actually the opposite. In fact, I had heard that at other schools, people were kind of just like placed um, for their first practicum or like matched. And for me, I love that I was able to choose my own first practicum and that I could relate it to my interests. Um, so that's why I chose the International Institute, which is a re, uh, refugee resettlement agency because I'm super interested in issues of like forced displacement and well-being. Um, and so for me, it was important that I was like at an organization that was aligned with my interest, but I did case management, which is something I've never really like considered. And it actually taught me that I don't want to do case management in the future. That really did not resonate with me, but I learned so much um, in that role. And especially as case management relates to what I do want to do, which is more like policy systems level. And so, you know, I feel like I didn't do what I wanted to do, but I, you could still like get so much out of it and it can help you direct what you want to do in the future, what you want to focus on or inform, you know, policy from practice and practice from policy. Okay. Lauren. Yeah, I was going to say for me, I did a little bit of both where I, I don't have a lot of background in drama, um, but I, I wanted to do something that was doing some kind of like group therapy, because that's something I'm interested in, but have never actively like participated in or facilitated. So before I went into my concentration um, practicum, I wanted to see if this is something that I wanted to continue doing. So kind of to Ali's point, I wanted to figure out if I actually like this or am I gonna wanna try something different? Thanks, Lauren. Um, and now we only have three more minutes left. So before we sign off, I would just like to share a few announcements on behalf of the Office of Admissions. Um, let's go back to my presentation real quick. Um, and so we do have uh, plenty of admitted uh, student resources on our website um, to learn more about how to confirm your intent to enroll. You can also find financial aid resources and funding opportunities. Um, you can also look for different updates on uh, part-time jobs. Um, just go to brownschool.wustool.edu, Life at Brown, Admitted Students Resources, and it'll take you straight there. We also have Admitted Students Week coming up in April, uh, between April 5th and 8th. This is a wonderful opportunity for admitted students to come meet uh, faculty and staff and other current students and just to get to know uh, your whole cohort um, and just to uh, also get to know the different opportunities that you can take advantage of at the Brown School. Um, and then we also have a couple of admissions deadlines coming up. Uh, March 1st is our regular decision deadline coming up very soon. Um, and then after March 1st, we go into rolling admission and then our final deadline to apply is July 1st. Um, and then your uh, intent, to several, uh, intent to enroll submission is due May 1st. Um, and then we also have an upcoming info session next month. Uh, it'll be on Wednesday, March 23rd. You can register the same way you registered for this session on our website. Um, and we definitely look forward to seeing you all there. Um, and I just wanna say thank you all again to our panelists, to Jewel, Ali, Lauren, uh, Felicity, uh, Kishi, thank you all so much. And thank you for everyone who joined uh, today's session. Uh, and definitely feel free to email us at brownadmissions at wustool.edu if you have any questions. Uh, you can also email me. I'm gonna put my uh, email in the chat box if you have any questions. I know we didn't get to all, the, uh, to all of the questions today, so definitely feel free to email us. Um, thank you all again, uh, and I hope you have a wonderful evening.